so Photomatix has finished this output. I uh, went ahead and saved it as a TIFF document and then I opened it up in Adobe Photoshop CS6. So here we have it. I will go ahead and copy it. Now this HDR, the reason I chose this particular picture to start off the tutorial series with is that it's very very simple. Um, it's a very simple image. It's very symmetrical. There's no uh, clouds really to speak of. Um, so there's not much that can go wrong with this kind of an image, which is the good thing. It's a nice, classic, pretty little boathouse. Um, it's, uh, it's simple. So there's not going to be much that we need to do on, uh, in Photoshop to improve it. But what I will point out is the first thing that I did was I uh, copied it. I don't like messing with the background layer. I'll keep that always clicked off and just uh, make all of my adjustment to this uh, layer. So if I make a mistake, I can always go back to the original file. I always start off with curves and I'll show you exactly why. Photomatix does a great job in blending the five images. So we have the very, very bright ends with the very, very dark ends and it uh, meshed together very well. But, uh, and it, if it's done properly, you'll have your whole histogram within the dynamic range that the camera can handle, which is right here. This black point and this white point will alter what is your darkest, darkest spot. So if I click on it and I hit the option key on a Mac, I start moving, you'll see it's all white, which means that it really doesn't have a true black point. As I continue moving to the right, it'll start showing up. Those are true black points now. So now what I'll choose is I just want a little bit of a black point. There we go. So now I know I have a true black point down here. And I'll do the same thing with the uh, white point. See, it's all black, meaning I don't have a true white. And I'll slowly start moving, and there we start having a true white point uh, right on the very edge. So if I show you the before and after, you can see it's a subtle change, but an important one. And there we have it. So if we take a look at the image, we zoom in close, you'll see we've got plenty of detail there. Uh, so that works. It probably needs a little bit of sharpening, but uh, that is about it. What I will do is I'll go over here to the vibrance. Uh, so the difference between vibrance and saturation, saturation changes, uh, it saturates all of the colors on the image. It doesn't matter whether it's a bright color or dark color, it'll either increase the saturation or decrease the saturation evenly across them all which is actually, you know, quite uh, um, overpowering at times. Instead with Vibrance, what it does is just selects your really, really bright colors, your important colors, and messes with that. So you can see I can go considerably higher on the slider before it starts uh, really becoming a bit uh, too much. Whereas on saturation, it very quickly becomes uh, too much for the eye to bear. The way I view saturation is that a little bit of saturation in a, in a picture is great, but the eye needs some place to rest. If it's uh, too saturated, the eye becomes a bit tired. So I'll take up Vibrance nice and high. Okay. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down to this layer and I'm going to start adjusting these little marks in the water see them here and try to uh, remove them with uh, this spot healing brush. Make the brush a bit smaller and you see we'll just start taking those away. These were little fish and whatnot that was actually under the water but it was kicking up very shallow water in these parts. It was kicking up quite a bit of bubbles and everything, which is what you see coming to the surface here. So I'll just very quickly go through all of these. Normally I'd be a little bit more careful, but uh, for the sake of time we'll do this as quick as we can. And uh, I like, I could have done this in Lightroom, but uh, and in Lightroom the five beta that's currently out, um, the, the spot healing brush has been improved dramatically. Uh, but since I haven't downloaded that one yet, uh, I don't like the uh, spot healing brush too much of the uh, Lightroom. I do like the one on Photoshop, 
because I can do odd shaped uh, corrections. We'll just go through it. We have one here. There we go. Good. I'll leave those where they're at. Yeah, I'll just take off this one here, this one here. So anyway, you see what I'm trying to do? Just create a bit of a... That's looking good. The horizon looks fairly clean. I think most we managed to get most of the spots. I do have a nice big spot right here, if you can see it. It wasn't visible on any one image, but when you combine them all uh, with uh, photomatics, it compounds whatever spots you might have. So sometimes what's visible in one is not, uh, or what wasn't visible with one, it'll be visible with another. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, click over here on my layer. I'll click another curves. And really what I want to do is darken the image, but I don't really want to darken uh, so much the area of the boathouse itself. What I'll do is I'll click on this little hand and I'll click over here on the sky somewhere, slowly dragging it down, bringing it a little bit darker than I would like, something like that. Now you can see as soon as I created the curve, it created um, this, uh, this layer here, this mask here. What I'll do is I'll hit Command I to invert. Now it's turned completely black. So everything I've done is not visible. Anything that's white here, it'll be visible on, on this layer. So what I'll do is I'll select my brush. I'm going to select, uh, make sure I'm painting in white, which is the opposite. And I'll take the opacity down to about 30%, because if I put it up to 100%, the problem that I have is that it becomes very obvious the change. So instead, by taking the opacity down to 30% or so, the change is a lot less obvious. Okay, so then what I'll do is I'll start up at this very top left hand corner and just drag it straight through. Okay, then lower it bring it down. So what I'm basically doing is creating basic sort of like a gradient uh, fill here. I'm applying it all over. Now there are many different ways of doing it. This is the way that I like to. I think it gives me a lot of uh, artistic liberty to decide where I apply this darkening and where I don't. But you can see it's making, and that's just with a 30% opacity, but you can see that it's really bringing out some of the colors here. Now I've lifted the pen, so basically if you look and I hit option, you could see that I've applied it all throughout here to be roughly gray. This area that's black, which is where the boathouse is, it's not being, uh, nothing is being applied to. I should probably apply it some down there. Sorry, there we go. And then what I'll do is I'll apply a second pass just a bit farther away from the boathouse. Just at the top, bring it down here on the edges here. Almost creating like a vignetting type thing, keeping the center a bit brighter. There we go, and so you could see the before and the after. It's a subtle change, but I like what it does.